Hey everybody on YouTube land, my name is Mike and I love guitars. A few weeks ago I posted a guitar collection video and well, you guys seem to really like that video so I figured I'd follow up with an amp collection video. Let's do this. While I've been collecting guitars for a very long time, it's really only been relatively recently that I started seriously collecting amps as well. I've usually had at least a couple at any given time, but it's only been in the last few years that I've really started to expand the collection. Like my guitar collection video, we'll start this video with the amp that I've owned the longest. This is my 91 Marshall JCM 950 watt dual reverb. This was the first real amp that I ever bought when I was 19 or 20. At the time, the 100 watt version was the amp that most of the guitar players in my hometown were drooling over, but I always wanted the 50 watt. It wasn't until years later that I started seeing people online bashing the 900. From what I can tell, when you really dig into it, it seems to be the later 900s with the 5881 tubes that people specifically dislike, but none of that really matters to me. This is still my favorite amp and it's always the first amp I plug into for recording. Next up is an amp I picked up probably close to 15 years ago. At the time, I was playing in a band that was trying to sound more modern, and as much as I love my 900, I just wanted to try something a little different. After briefly trying out a Mesa Nomad, I came across this JCM2000 DSL100 in a pawn shop that a friend of mine was managing at the time. He gave me a really good deal, and this amp became my main amp for the rest of my time in that band. Rounding out the JCM amp collection is my 1989 JCM 800 220450 watt. I have always wanted a JCM 800 due to its legendary status and almost bought one a couple of times over the years. I finally got one off a of reverb almost two years ago right when I first started this channel. This particular amp has 6550 power tubes and sounds a little more gnarly than an 800 with EL34s. It's a really cool amp that I've recorded with a few times now and will continue to use whenever that sound will best serve a song. This next amp is my Mesa Boogie Single Rectifier Rectiverb. I got this amp about a year and a half ago from a longtime friend who was actually looking to get away from the boogie sound, and this is actually the only rectifier I've ever owned. No real reason for not ever having owned another before, other than I just never came across one at a good price when I actually had money to spend on another amp. I know some people kind of turn their noses up at single recs, but I think this amp sounds great and I've used it several times on this channel already. My only other Mesa currently is this Stiletto Deuce. Much like JCM 900s, a lot of people online love to hate this amp. I think a lot of that comes from a misunderstanding of how to use this amp though. The Stiletto is an EL34 based Mesa that was basically designed to sound like a hot rod of JCM 900, with one major difference. This amp has a lot of treble, like a lot, a lot. When this amp initially came out, people tried to dial them in like they would dial in an 800 and ended up with way too much treble. If you're patient and use your ear to dial it in instead of your eyes, these amps can sound really cool. I haven't used it on the channel yet, but I'm hoping to put something together with it soon. Next up is my EVH 5153 50 watt amp. I got this amp from a pawn shop in early 2020 at the very beginning of the craziness that year, and honestly, I got it for an absolute steal. I've used this amp several times on the channel now and it sounds awesome. I would love to get my hands on a Stealth or an EL34 model at some point, but for now, this will have to do. This amp is the first of two amps that I inherited from my dad when he passed in 2020. It's a 1964 Fender Tremolux, and for an amp that will be 60 years old next year, it's in absolutely amazing condition. It's a two channel amp and the second channel has a vibrato effect that's controllable with the foot switch. This amp has a very cool, very vintage sound, and my dad used it for years with his Gibson L5 as a young man, playing in bars to earn money for his family and his education. As cool as my dad's Fender Tremolux is, this amp might be even cooler. This is the second amp that I inherited from my dad, and it's a 1955 Fender Deluxe. You might notice immediately that this amp has a very different look than any other Fender from that era. This amp originally belonged to the father of my dad's childhood best friend. He didn't play an instrument, but instead bought it to play reel-to-reel -reel tapes through. At some point, I'm guessing in the late 60s to early 70s, judging by the colors, he decided that the exterior of the amp was getting a little beaten up. He was a furniture upholsterer by trade and replaced the original tweed covering and grill cloth himself with what you see here. 
Years after he passed away, my dad's friend found it while cleaning out his old house, and he gave it to my dad. At one point, I thought about having this amp restored to its original look, but ultimately decided that its current look is just all part of its story, and I just love a piece of gear with a great story. This next amp is one I picked up three or four years ago from a pawn shop. It's a Bugera Tri-Rec Infinium 100 amp. I bought this amp when I was wanting a rectifier sound for recording, but hadn't come across a Mesa Boogie at the right price yet. While several Bugera amps seem to copy circuits outright, this amp has more of a inspired by rectifier circuit than a direct copy. It gets very close to the rectifier sound, but at a significantly lower price point. I haven't even turned it on since I bought my rectifier though, so it'll probably go up for sale soon. Now this amp might be the most hated tube amp ever made. At least, that's what most internet message boards would have you think. I found this Crate Blue Voodoo 120 a few months ago at a pawn shop at a fairly affordable price, and I decided to pick it up to see if it's really as bad as people online say. I'll be doing a demo video on it soon, but for now, I'll simply say that once you get the insane amount of gain under control, this amp actually sounds pretty decent. Love them or hate them, one thing that can be said about Crate is that during the 90s when I started playing guitar, very few other companies were putting gear in the hands of young players at very affordable prices like Crate. PV is the only other company that comes to mind, really. Where I grew up, if you couldn't afford the giant Marshall amps, you played Crate or PV. Circling back to finish up my Marshall collection, this amp is a 1986 Marshall Lead 12 Solid State Practice Amp. This was actually given to me by one of my oldest friends maybe 18 months ago. He has a knack for having gear just fall into his lap, and this amp is one of those pieces of gear. Someone else gave it to him, and he already had a couple of small practice amps. He knows I love Marshall amps and collect gear, so the next time he came to visit, he brought it with him. It sounds about like you would expect a small, solid-state practice amp from the mid-80s to sound. I play through it from time to time when I just want to noodle a riff and don't feel like setting up a bigger amp. This next amp had a full demo in my last video and is my current newest amp. It's a Marshall Origin 20 that I found in a pawn shop nearby, and it's an affordable import amp based on an old Plexi circuit. It's more of a modern reimagining than a reissue, and I bought this amp as the main amp for a new project I'm working on with a friend. It has a decent amount of crunch gain with a built-in boost and switchable effects loop. If you're interested in a full rundown of this amp, check out the demo video I made for it. Finally, we have my 9-volt battery-powered Marshall MS2. Pretty sure I got this from a pawn shop for 20 or 30 bucks maybe 20 years ago. I had one of these when they first came out in the 90s, but lost it somewhere along the way. I really bought this one out of nostalgia more than anything when I found it. They kind of sound terrible, but in a cool way. One of these days, I'll stick a mic in front of it and record it for a part in a song. Next up is my orange Brent Hines Terror. I've been a fan for Lunchbox amps for a while now, and this is the first one I've actually bought. I found it in a pawn shop, where else, a few years ago. It's a really cool amp with a more vintage voicing than your typical Orange Terror amp, and the dedicated clean channel is a nice touch. Stick an overdrive in front of it and you can get a tighter, more modern sound. I would definitely like to add more Orange Lunchbox amps to the collection, but I haven't come across one at the right price yet. That brings us to the last amp in my collection. This is a battery-powered Blackstar Fly 3, and it was given to me by a good friend. I'll be honest, I've never even put batteries in this thing, much less turned it on, so I have no idea what it sounds like but it was a gift from a good friend, so I'm keeping it. Finally, at the very end of this list, we can take a look at the three cabinets that I own. First is this Marshall 1960 BV cabinet that I've had for at least 15 years. I've played more shows with it than I can count. The 1960 BV is loaded with Celestion G12 speakers and is supposed to have a darker tone than the 1960 AV cabinet. I don't have a 1960 AV cabinet to compare it with to verify that, but as I tend to like a slightly darker guitar tone than most guitar players, this cabinet is pretty perfect for my Marshall amps. Next up is this Fender 210 cabinet. It's the original matching cabinet for my dad's Trimalux amp and is in just as good a condition as the amp is. It has the original Jensen speakers and it sounds awesome. Last up is my newest cabinet. This is my orange PPC 112 cabinet that I bought to play my Marshall Origin 20 through. It's the perfect physical size for the Origin 20 and it sounds great. Being small and light is also a huge plus since I'm not as young as I used to be and lugging around giant 412 cabinets is really rough on my back these days. And that's it guys, that is my entire current amp collection. I do have one new amp on layaway at a pawn shop right now and I'll probably sell a couple of these this year so I just figured it was a really good time to go ahead and document things. I hope everyone enjoyed this video as much as you seem to enjoy my guitar collection video. Please feel free to tell me about your amps in the comments below.
Blueberry burst, silver burst. Ah, oh, I can't decide, man. Oh, hey! Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. And remember, keep playing your guitars.